let you make up your own minds on some of these descriptions. I think it's important. I try to put them all together. Now, another thing a lot of people want to know about is where is Nykarp right bridge and where is Loose Ridge from right here. And if you look straight in front of me, you'll notice that this, uh, this little knoll drops off down here. And you've got this big ravine that snakes its way. That's the name of that hill. Where a homosexual dog was chased down the hill. Pro story is, there was a, a leader called Homosexual Dog, War Party Leader. They got surrounded by some Sioux and some Lakota up on top of that hill. And uh, there was Lakota all the way around that surrounded, and they thought they were going to die and get killed on top of the hill. And Homosexual Dog said to his party up there, I'm not going to stay up here and let them kill me on top of the hill. And he and his, his party went racing down that hill, and uh, all those Crow survived. They rode right through those Lakota and got away. So now you know the name of the animal. And that interesting? Weird talks to Reno. By the way, there's debate on whether he even talked to Reno. He tells Edgerly later on, I didn't even talk to Reno. I think he did. Uh, Martin talks about that he's waving his hands. And he doesn't say he's practically talking to Reno, but he's excited. He's waving his hands. He's pointing down river. He's asking Reno to come down here, and Reno says, no, you can't, you get your men all killed. And then he takes off. Supposedly also, Ben Keen and Moylan are nearby, and they also try to discourage Weir from coming down this direction. So Weir, at some point, how long it takes him to do all that stuff, I think probably about an hour, maybe a little over an hour. Does anybody want to guess how long it takes to ride a horse at a trot from Reno Hill to the hill run right now? Again, I filmed it. Five it takes, you ready for this? It takes four minutes. Four minutes at a trot. See, we're used to walking everywhere driving in a car. But I got a guy on a horse over there, four minutes to the top of the hill here. So, and all these times that I'm going to show you, and your little time, shine, share time I'm going to give you at the end of this tour today, it's going to lay it out, and it's based on time rides and horse rides and all these other things I'm giving you right now, okay? Now, this is what I was shocked at when I was studying this. There's actually a map of where Edgerly goes. He talks to Walter Camp and he maps. It's right here. It's in my book if you hadn't seen it. This, by the way, Walter Camp's early maps were doo-doo. <laughs> he comes out here. He says, I did a great job on the Custer end, but I didn't do a very good job of the terrain down here. And when you look at these early maps, 1909, 1910, they're horrible. He's got mountains in the wrong spot so this is all kind of skewed so it's later on in 1910 that he actually begins to do some great stuff out here so when Edgerly's drawn on this map with camp it's very difficult to make out exactly where he goes even today because the map is so squirrely but this is where oral history comes in I'm going to pass this around but you're going to notice that what Edgerly does he comes out here Weir took off by himself Edgerly follows him, but he doesn't join him. I always thought they came up together, but they didn't. When you read the accounts very carefully, and that's what I'm about to do. Weir was standing on the high point, signaling the enemy were coming, and I circled over to the left and crossed Weir's track and swung ahead to the high point in front of me. In other words, he went out here somewhere, made a big loop, and came back up on this hill from the front side right here. And we were rolling along the crest of the bus where Custer was last seen alive by any of our command. We took the troops a little to the right, following the shallow ravine, etc., etc., etc. I mounted up by troop and followed him weird. After going a few hundred yards, I swung off to the right with the troop in the little valley, on and on and on down here. The only time that Weir comes up here is when Weir waves him back. You know, I always thought they came out together, but they didn't. So he's way out here. Weir's up here seeing the Indians coming, and he waits Weir to come back up on top of the hill. And by the way, but right where we're standing, they found a large conglomeration of cartridges. Why we're found them here, found in 1994, a lot of cartridges right here. The 
course, that's going to happen up here. He's got to come back. When Edgerly gets on top of the hill, he's going to look back and I see the other three coming. coming. Benteen's coming, Prince is coming, and Dodger's coming. And they get up here a few minutes after we are up on top of the hill. Okay? They were up here. They were watching Country Glass Man and didn't know it. They could see the dust and smoke and they see the warriors. They couldn't, they couldn't have stopped it anyway. They couldn't stop it. One last thing before we get back in the car. This is Charlie. He's got his marker way down there. I don't know why, folks. Should be that. By the way, the two soldiers said he was shot between Edgerly Peaks. These are Edgerly Peaks right here where the saddle is in this area. That's probably where Vincent Charlie was shot. But a few other soldiers said he was right here. And if you remember the episode, they begin to pull back. Edgerly doesn't want to leave. Prince says everybody's leaving. Says, you gotta go. So they start coming off here. And believe it or not, why is this? We went at a wall from the top of the hill. And the wars begin to gather. We find any cartridges on the hill right over here. They were shooting down from that hill over here. This one right there across the way? Right over there. Yeah. They're taking that hill as these soldiers are falling back. They find any cartridges over there in the 94 days. Wiley's holding the guide on his staff is shattered by the bullet by an Indian warrior and his canteen has a bullet hole and Vince and Charlie shot at the same time. The Indians are getting really damn close. Matter of fact, they were said they were real, real close. You can remember, uh, Edgerly gets off his horse and tries to help Vince and Charlie. Mm -hmm. He says, fall into a hole, we'll come back and get you. Charlie was shot through the hips. Blood was coming out of his mouth, they said. And he left him here. By the way, when Edgerly tried to get on his horse, he could. The horse kept swinging around. Mm -hmm. Swinging around. I see that happen. I've been in the gym. This is what happened to me. <laughs> to trying to get on there. So the sergeant came up beside him, puts his horse up there where Edgerly can get on it, and he's laughing his ass off. So the sergeant is. And by the way, when they finally get back, he says, What was so funny? Who's in it? He says, Bad shots. <laughs> <laughs> now they're close, folks. They're close. It didn't happen way down there. That's about 300 yards away down there. It had to happen that year. And by the way, in 1903, Grover, the superintendent, got a body over here somewhere. I can't find the records because the damn is too right now. Boy, I want to do some digging on that, but I couldn't find the record where the body was from. But they put an unknown body in the National Cemetery. It's probably one of the locations of the 1990s. Dug up those unknown soldiers, and they found one in Prince Charlie, Charlie, uh, Mr. Charlie, uh, the Mr. Pike, and a bullet through the hip. And now he has a marker on that. This is where Benteen stuck his guide on right here. No way. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> he said he hit some rocks. He put him on the rocks.